Good morning. morning. Welcome to our worship today. And we're continuing our series, The Choice to Rejoice, under the theme, The Journey to Joy. Um, Just a couple of things before we begin. There will be a a presentation, a real brief presentation, by our guest um, from the Gideons, Lauren Showquist. He's right up here. He's going to be joining us for the Bible study also. So right after the um, closing hymn, we'll have him come up and he'll tell us a a little bit about uh, the Gideons and their work. And then we'll go after worship. uh, uh, He'll meet downstairs with anybody who'd like to know more. We hope you come down and and hear his presentation. Also, um, right after the worship up here, there's going to be a real short vacation Bible school meeting. So we're going to we're going to have It's going to be really brief, five minutes to seven, ten minutes like that. Very short. Up here in the conference room, for those that are volunteering for Vacation Bible School this year, that's August, um, first Monday and Tuesday in August. So we we invite those who are volunteering to Vacation Bible School to come on over to the conference room, and we're going to hand out materials and responsibilities, things like that, that you can take with you uh, today. So we'll go ahead and we'll follow the printed uh, order of worship. And we are going to sing the hymn of invocation, Awake my soul with and with the sun. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Paul exhorts us to have the same attitude that was in Christ Jesus. Yet, we fail so very often. Therefore, we must flee to God, our merciful Father. Almighty God, maker of all things, judge of all people, We admit and confess that we have abandoned the attitude of Christ. We have turned away from each other in our thinking, speaking, and doing. And we bear grudges against people and live only for ourselves. We seek revenge against those who hurt us. We claim to be faithful, but do not claim your promises. We live not by faith, but by our own resources. We repent and are truly sorry for these our sins. God's forgiveness overflows from Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not, account, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, He humbled himself and became obedient to death, 
even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Jesus, though you are God, with all the influence and status that this implies, you adopted the role of a servant. As incredible as it sounds, you are the God who serves, and we can respond in no other way than to give ourselves to you in endless praise. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now, ever, forever, and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading for the Sunday is found in the 31st chapter of Jeremiah, starting at the 8th verse. Behold, I will bring them from the north country and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth. Among them the blind and the lame, the pregnant woman and she who is in labor, together a great company, they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with pleas for mercy I will lead them back. I will make them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, he who has scattered Israel will gather him, and will keep him as a shepherd keeps his flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob, and has redeemed him from hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil, over the young of the flock and of the herd. Their life shall be like a watered garden, and they shall languish no more. <clears throat> Then shall the young women rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. This is the word of the Lord. <clears throat> the psalm for this Sunday is Psalm 41. Blessed is the one who considers the poor. In the day of trouble, the Lord delivers him. The Lord protects him and keeps him alive. He is called blessed in the land. You do not give him up to the will of his enemies. The Lord sustains him on his sickbed. In his illness, you restore him to full health. As for me, I said, O oh Lord, be gracious to me. Heal me, for I have sinned against you. My enemies say of me in malice, When will he die and his name perish? And when one comes to see me, he utters empty words while his heart gathers iniquity. When he goes out, he tells it abroad. All who hate me whisper together about me. They imagine the worst for me. They say a deadly thing is poured out on him. He will not rise again from where he lies. Even my close friend in whom I trusted, who ate my bread, has lifted his heel against me. But you, O Lord, be gracious to me and raise me up that I may repay them. By this I know that you delight in me. My enemy will not shout and triumph over me, but you have upheld me because of my integrity 
and set me in your presence forever. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Amen and amen. <clears throat> the epistle lesson is found in the second chapter of Philippians, starting at the fifth verse. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. Invite the children to come forward for the children's message. Good morning, everybody. It's great to see you all here. How many of you like to read? Do you like to read? How many of you are just learning how to read? Well, what's the first thing you have to learn before you learn how to read? Spell it out. Well, what's the first thing you have to learn? You've got to learn the letters, right? You've got to learn your ABCs, and then you can... Learn all those letters, then you put them into words, they're put into words, and you can learn how to spell, and you learn how to read. It's a wonderful thing to be able to learn how to read. Well, in order to do the alphabet, you've got to know the order, too. We like to do things in sequence. It's a big word, sequence. So one comes before the other, and then the other, then the other. So A comes first, right? Then comes B. Then comes S. Is that right? No. Okay. That's not right. How about this? A, then D, then Z. How about that? Is that right? Okay. All right. So you know there is a proper sequence, right? A, what's after A? Oh, close your eyes. Close your eyes. Okay, now tell me what's after B? C. C. What's after C? Okay, you got it. Okay, you can open your eyes again. Well, it's the same thing with numbers, right? So we use numbers a lot. We learn our numbers, and then we can count all kinds of different things. So it's the same thing. Before you can have five, you have to have one, and then two, and then three, and then four, then comes five. So everything needs to be done in its proper order, just like A, B, C, First letter is A, then B, then C, and it goes all the way to Z to the end. Same thing with numbers. And here, this is all the way to 10. Once you can start counting to 10, boy, it's just, you can keep on counting. It's just kind of fun. And you'll learn what the higher numbers are, too. So that's all in sequence also. you got to have number one comes before Number two, and then comes number three, and then comes number four. And you, so you learn all your letters, you learn all your numbers. Well, let's think about sequence again. We're just talking a little bit about sequence here. Now we're going to talk about what happens when you have supper or, you know, when you eat. Now, how many of you, when your mom or your dad or whoever's providing you a supper, the first thing that you get to eat is apple pie. Is that the first thing you eat? No, no, okay, that's not right either. What about salad? Salad comes before apple pie, and usually there's some other things in there too, right? So something has to happen before you can have apple pie. You got to eat all the other foods because that's what's really good for you, helps your body. Even though, you know, we like that apple pie, uh, we need other food too. So, Need a good balance, right? 
So all these things happen in sequence. Numbers and letters and even when we eat, okay? And it's the same thing when it comes to what we're learning today from God's word. Is there something happens? Jesus loves you. And because he loves you, now you can love others. But this is the thing, is that Jesus gave up himself, his life for you and for me. And now the sequence for us then too is to, because Jesus loves us and we've been forgiven by Jesus, we now can love other people. And this is real joy. This is kind of like the sequence of joy. So when you know Jesus is your savior and that he loves you, then that makes you think, wow, I'm going to love other people just like Jesus loves me. And so then you think of Jesus first, and then you think of others, and then you think of yourself. And that's kind of the sequence of joy. You have great joy when this is the way that you kind of think about yourself and other people. You put other people first, right? You help, you help other students. You help other, other brothers or sisters first rather than yourself. So that's the joy. This is kind of the secret sequence of joy. Jesus, others, and then yourself. And that's, that's just how you spell joy, too. J-O-Y. Jesus, others, and you. And that's actually what Jesus did for you. He gave his life for you so that in, the, in love, then we can live eternally with him in heaven. Our sins are forgiven. So let's join in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for, for letters and for numbers and the blessings that they are as we learn our letters and learn our numbers. We can use them in so many different ways. And we also thank you, Jesus, for the gift of joy and the sequence of joy. Because you, Jesus, loved us. Now we can love others. And, and then um, we can realize, you know, our needs will come. You will provide. So we ask that you will give us great joy as we follow Jesus, love others, and then think of our needs ourselves. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, we turn your seats. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the seventh chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. So whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Enter by the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction. And those who enter by it are many. For the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life, and those who find it are few. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will recognize them by their fruits. Are grapes gathered from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? So every healthy tree bears good fruit, but the diseased tree bears bad fruit. A healthy tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a diseased tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus you will recognize them by their fruits. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Please be seated. of you are spoken, Zion city of our God. 
God, he whose word cannot be broken, formed you for his own abode. On the rock of ages found and what can shake your sure repose? With salvation's walls surrounded, you may smile at all your foes. See the streams of living waters springing from eternal love. Well, supply your sons and daughters and all fear of want remove. Who can faint while such a river ever will their thirst assuage? Grace which like the Lord the giver never fails from age to age. Round each habitation hovering, see the cloud and fire appear for a glory and a covering showing that the Lord is near thus deriving from their banner light by night and shade by day safe they feed upon the manna which God gives them on their way. Save your sins of Zion City, I through grace a member am. Let the world deride or pity, I will glory in your name. Fading are the world's vain pleasures, all their boasted pomp and show. Solid joys and lasting treasures, none but Zion's children know. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Today we continue with Philippians. We come to the heart and center of Philippians, chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. I'm calling this sermon, The Journey to Joy. What word describes most people's journey to joy? What word encapsulates what most people, including all of us, often are all about? What really makes our hearts beat? What makes our spirits soar? The only word for most people when it comes to the journey to joy is two letters. What would those two letters be? Up. Up. That's the journey to joy. For many people, including, as I would accent, many times us, the journey to joy is to go up. If you want joy, then the goal is to go as high as you can go on that ladder. Up, upscale, up and coming, upper class, upwardly mobile, rise up against the odds, the crowd, or whatever gets in your way. If you want joy, then the world offers you a simple one-word solution. Up. A quick glance at the best-selling books in America over the last 30 or 40 years clearly reveals our intoxication and infatuation with up. Here are some of the titles. Passport to Prosperity. Winning moves, 
Here's a good one. True grief. Winning through intimidation. Here's another book titled, Cashing in on the American Dream. How to retire at age 35. Can you believe there's actually a book out there titled The Art of Selfishness, as though I actually need to read a book to figure that out? <laughs> Here's another one. Techniques that take you to the top. How to get what you really want. Secrets to quick success. And then this, then this is my favorite. Leadership Secrets of Attila the Hunt. <laughs> Leadership Secrets of Attila the Hunt. We see this intoxication and infatuation with up in a funky winker bean comic strip. The dean of the college, wearing mortar board and gown, is addressing the graduating class. He says, I know the world's in crisis. I know that there are shortages all over the place. I know that there's climate change. I know that quite often we feel like we are living on the brink of nuclear disaster. That said, I think you could come up with a better class motto than this. Get yours while there's still some left. We are not exempt from this pursuit of up. Just as a needle on a compass always points north, our hearts, our sinful hearts, always point up. Ask just about anyone about the journey to joy, and their answer will be singular. UP, up. On the other hand, oh, brothers and sisters, on the other hand, ask Jesus about the journey to joy. And Jesus' answer will also be singular. Jesus says the answer to joy is what? Down. Jesus goes down. In our vocabulary, we hate the word down, right? <laughs> down is the word of losers and the lazy and the left behind and the low achievers. Down. We use this word when we talk about being depressed. We say, well, I'm down and out. Then there's downscale, downsize, down in the mouth, downhill, downhearted, down, 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 dooby doo, down, down, right? No one likes the word down. I want to climb the ladder, I want to go up. Even the best Manhattan advertising agency would be hard pressed with this word down. Just imagine their catchy jingle. Lose it all. Imagine the possibilities. Jesus, <laughs> Jesus. Jesus begins at the top, at the very top. If anyone was up, <laughs> that would be Jesus. This is what Paul says. In our second reading, who being in very nature God. Jesus isn't an assistant to God. Jesus isn't a vice president to God of sort of Kamala Harris of the universe. Jesus isn't a junior partner to God. Jesus is a full-fledged member of the Godhead equal with the Almighty in every way from eternity past. God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father. Jesus puts it this way in John 14, verse 9. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Hebrews 1, verse 3 puts it this way. The Son, that's Jesus, is the radiance of God's glory, and here it comes, the exact representation of his being. Jesus was up, way up, as high as you can go. And then he took the first step down. He did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing. In other translations, 
That phrase is rendered this way, who emptied himself. When he emptied himself, he made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, a slave, and being made in human likeness. The all-powerful, all-knowing, almighty second person of the Trinity felt the confining sense of skin. Jesus used doors and had to write animals. Jesus had to eat and sleep. Imagine the God of the universe saying this, Okay, Mom, whatever you say, Dad. How did Jesus feel when people didn't cry out in adoration and worship? Wherever Jesus had traveled from eternity past, angels and archangels and all the company of heaven would say, Holy, holy, holy. The earth is filled with your glory. Now this same person, Jesus, rubs shoulders with those who created, and they say, get out of my way, Jew boy. Move it, buddy. <laughs> Jesus never stopped going down. The creator of all things, he owned nothing. The king of kings, he washed feet. The source of truth, he's accused of a lie. A slave? Slave? Really? You can almost hear the angels crying out, That's far enough, Jesus. That's far enough. You've gone down far enough. But Jesus continued to go down. How did he die? By taking hemlock and resting on a soft mattress? By taking a cyanide tablet? By hooking himself up to a painless death machine? And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself, became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Humbled literally means a reversal of status. In this case, Jesus went from being totally up to going totally down. The Nicene Creed says as much, who for us men and our salvation came down. The bloody mess of the cross shatters all analogies, all metaphors, all similes, and all parallels. Words collapse before the atrocity of it all. Here is God on the cross. Blood and spitter cake to his cheeks, his nerves snap as death pangs his mortal melody. We can only imagine what he felt as he was spiked to wood, mocked, ridiculed, and derided by his enemies. In dying on a cross, Jesus violated every tenet of our system. Jesus subverts everything we hold near and dear. The journey to joy, Jesus says, is down. And in doing so, Jesus turns the world upside down. Take a look. This is the world of Jesus, where the first are last and the last are first. It's all kind of crazy, isn't it? But sisters and brothers, this is <laughs> the kingdom of God. This is the reign of Jesus. And this is the journey to joy. It's a journey to go down. And Jesus went down. You can almost hear Paul gasp as he writes those words, even death on a cross. Jesus went all the way down for you. For you. Jesus went down to lift you up, up out of your darkness, up out of your guilt, up out of your miry pit of shame and disgrace. And once we're up, <laughs> forgiven, loved, heaven bound, bodied, bloodied, filled, where does Jesus call us? 
Jesus calls us into this upside down world. (laughs) Jesus calls us to go down. Not to wallow in our sin and wretchedness any longer. Down to delight in humble service forever. Let me be specific. Men, the call down for you is to change diapers of your children. Take the time to really listen to your wife. Vacuum the living room. Set an example to your children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren by being regular in worship. Women, the call down for you is to say no to selling your soul to the Lord of the malls, the game of gossip, the jungle of judgment, and the silent stairs. So which way are you going? Up? We're down. When I was six years old, my family was vacation in Glenwood Springs, Colorado. If you've ever been there, they still have their famous hot spring swimming pool. My dad Bob Blessing, in his infinite wisdom, decided it was high time for his six-year-old son, Reed Lessing, to jump off the high dive. (laughs) It's a ritual of sorts, isn't it? For a child to trust a parent who's coaching them to jump off the diving board for the first time. That's what Jesus is calling you to do. Me as well. Just here, just now. Take the jump, the jump down. Oh, we're scared. What will happen? I might lose control. (laughs) But Jesus knows what's best. We're happiest when we're humble. Humble people are happy people. I'll say that again. Humble people are the happiest people. We're most alive. When we trust God and take the leap, we're most loving when we serve. But when we jump, it's risky. Can we trust Jesus to be there? I'll let you decide. Paul helps us. Therefore, God exalted Jesus to the highest place and gave him the name that's above every name. The name of Jesus is above every name, like cancer and sickness and depression and divorce and demons, devil and death itself. You see, the name of Jesus trumps every other name. That the name of Jesus, Paul goes on, every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and I'm not. And that's to the glory of God the Father. So what's the journey to joy? Here it is. From the cradle to the cross to the crown. Do you see the journey to joy goes through the cross. When we go down in humble service, God lifts us up. The crown is coming, sisters and brothers. God will lift us up to a life of meaning and significance, a life of depth and purpose. The Bible puts it this way. If you exalt yourself, you'll be humble. But if you humble yourself, you'll be exalted. You want to go up? Then God will take you down. Proud, pompous, pretentious people are some of the saddest, most miserable people I know. But if you go down to cross, 
God will lift you up. Strange as it may sound, down in servanthood and humility is the journey to deep, lasting, and eternal joy. All of which is to say, it's time to jump. I invite you to join me. It's the clear choice to rejoice. May the peace of God which transcends all understanding guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus to life eternal. Amen. We stand for our next hymn. proclaim a king who does not flaunt his power or deride the opposition. We worship you, O Christ. We proclaim a king who teaches that victory is not found in winning an election, achieving political power, or getting our way all the time. We worship you, O Christ. We proclaim a king who triumphed in humility, entering the gates of Jerusalem without style, pomp, or swagger. We proclaim a king who showed us how victory is achieved, not in dominance or aggression or winning an argument, but in sacrificial love. We worship you, O Christ. We proclaim a king who declared that his flower followers would be known by their love and who lived so that they would also wash feet. We worship you, O Christ. O King Jesus, empower us to work for the good of all people. Be united by your Holy Spirit and abound in your mercy, kindness, hope, and love. O oh Lord, on this day we bring before you all who are in need, the fatherless, the widows, the lonely, the homebound, those in care facilities, those hospitalized, we pray for Rich, George, Jackie, John, Joseph, John, Verna, Billy, Laverne, and those that we name in our hearts. We pray for the families of Samuel Gee and, and Tony Wynn in their grief. Be present with them 
and comfort them by your Holy Spirit's power and through the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. Lord, we pray for Vacation Bible School as we approach Vacation Bible School, that you would be with the leaders who will be serving and also those who will, will hear the message of the gospel. We pray for those that are attending the National Youth Gathering. We're grateful for the opening program, the opening program last night, and we ask your continued blessing upon all those who are there and from our congregation, those that are at the gathering, Tim Morris, Caleb Morris, Selma, Elizabeth, and Katerina. Watch over them and bless them and help them to receive your message, be uplifted and strengthened in their faith and their trust in you in a way that they can carry with them all their days. And we continue to pray. Being in very nature God, Jesus Christ is Lord, made himself nothing, Jesus Christ is Lord, taking the very nature of a servant, Jesus Christ is Lord, being made in human likeness, Jesus Christ is Lord, became obedient to death, Jesus Christ is Lord, even death on a cross, Jesus Christ is Lord, therefore God exalted him, and gave him the name that is above every name. Jesus Christ is Lord. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. Jesus Christ is Lord. And every tongue confess that. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. We continue with the communion liturgy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord our God, King of all creation. For you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Grant us your spirit, gracious Father, that we may give heed to the testament of your Son in true faith, and above all, firmly take to heart the words with which Christ gives to us his body and blood for our forgiveness. By your grace, lead us to remember and give thanks for the boundless love which he manifested to us when by pouring out his precious blood, he, gave, he saved us from your righteous wrath and from sin, death, and hell. Grant that we may receive the bread and wine that is his body and blood as a gift, guarantee, and pledge of his salvation. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship. With the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and at his command, and with his own words, we receive his testament. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, he gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup when he had supped, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, this cup is my blood in the new covenant, which is shed for you for the remission of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen. O Christ, the Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, 
have mercy upon us. O Christ, thou Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Christ, the Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, grant us thy peace. Amen. that now we see appearing on earth's horizon. Bring light from our God that we may be replete in his joy this season. God shine for us now in this dark place, your name on our hearts and place. O oh, day full of grace, O oh, blessed time, our Lord on the earth arriving. Then came to the world that light sublime, great joy for us all retrieving. For Jesus, all mortals did embrace, all darkness and shame removing. For Christ bore our sins and not his own when he on the cross was hanging. And then he arose and moved the stone that we unto him belonging might join with angelic hosts to raise our voices in endless singing. God came to us then at Pentecost his spirit new life revealing that we might no more from him be lost all darkness for us dispelling his flame will the mark of sin efface and bring to us all his healing when we on that final journey go, that Christ is for us preparing. We'll gather in song our hearts aglow, all joy of the heaven sharing. And walk in the light of God's own place, with angels his name adoring. This is the true blood of Jesus poured out for you. We can drink the true blood of Jesus because we all know this is the true blood of Jesus. Heart of peace and joy. Jesus loves you with an everlasting love. 
May we thy precepts, Lord, fulfill, and do on earth our Father's will, as angels do above. Still walk in Christ the living way, with all thy children, and obey the law of Christian love. So may we join thy name to bless, thy grace adore thy power confess, from sin and strife to flee. One is our calling, one our name, the end of all our hopes the same, a crown of life with thee. Spirit of life, of love and peace, Unite our hearts, our joy increase. Thy gracious help supply. To each of us the blessing give. In Christian fellowship to live. In joyful hope to die. body into death was given, life to win for us in heaven. No greater love than this to thee could bind us, may this feast thereof remind us. O Lord, have mercy. Lord, thy kindness did so constrain thee that thy blood should bless and sustain me. All our debt thou hast paid, peace with God once more is made. O Lord, have mercy. May God bestow on us his grace and favor that we follow Christ our Savior and live together here in love and union 
nor despise this blessed communion. O Lord, have mercy. Let not thy good spirit forsake us. Grant that heavenly minded he make us. Give thy church, Lord, to see days of peace and unity. O Lord, have mercy. Please stand and let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. And the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for our closing song. Lord, dismiss us with your blessing. Fill our hearts with joy and peace. Let us each your love possessing, triumph in redeeming grace. Oh, refresh us, oh, refresh us, traveling through this wilderness. Thanks we give and adoration for your gospel's joyful sound. May the fruits of your salvation in our hearts and lives abound. Ever faithful, ever faithful, to your truth may we be found. Savior, when your love shall call us from our struggling pilgrim way, let not fear of death appall us, glad your summons to obey. May we ever, may we ever reign with you in endless day.
thanks for uh, Kristen playing today. Thank you, and Dave. So let's... Um, I mentioned earlier that we'll have Lauren come on up and speak. So please come on up to the lectern here, and you can share uh, about the ministry of the Gideons. It is a joy for me to be at uh, Trinity, Local, Trinity Lone Oak Lutheran Church, along with my wife, Carol. First of all, I want to thank you for your support in yesteryear as well. I think many of you know about the Gideons. I've heard people say, I've seen the evidence of what you do, but I've never seen a real live Gideon. Well, if that's you, now you have. The objective of the Gideons is to win the lost for Jesus Christ. We have that command in Mark 16, 15, to go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the entire creation. Well, basically, you might be wondering, really, who are the Gideons? A very simple explanation of that might be, we are men and women of the church, taking the message of the church to those outside of the church to bring them into the church. One more time. We're men and women of the church, taking the message of the church to those outside of the church to bring them into the church. And that's what happened not too long ago to a very dear Gideon couple, very close to Carol and me. They were driving and they got rear-ended by someone as they were driving the pickup truck. Well, Daniel from Venezuela and Gabriella from Cuba got out and met the Gideon. Well, I'm not gonna tell you any more because you'll have to come downstairs to the gymnasium, as Paul Harvey used to say, for the rest of the story. But I can assure you, and we'll be focusing a little bit on this, God intersects people, places, times, events, and even people's states of mind to accomplish his will, even when they meet accidentally rear-ending the pickup truck. We'll see you downstairs in the gymnasium. I went down there before the service and I noticed on the wall words uh, something to the effect, um, winning your neighbor or witnessing to your neighbor, but it's the gist of that. Now we do have a free gift for you when you come down. You can add this gift to your spiritual toolbox and be used of the Lord as he would see fit. We'll see you down in the gymnasium. Thank you, God bless you. Thank you, let's head downstairs. <laughs> 